Top boxing news. Ow! Okay, we'll start with this. Well, it appears that Heather Hardy and Shelly Vincent are going to be having a rematch. And this rematch is going to be taking place on an undercard for the Sergey Didivianchenko and Daniel Jacobs title fight for the vacant IBF title at middleweight. Now, this rematch between Shelly and Heather is also going to be for a world title. The 126-pound version of the WBO title. And this is confirmed on both Insta both the Instagram pages of Shelly Vincent and Heather Hardy. And these are my preliminary thoughts. Ahead of this rematch, there is an element of intrigue. And what I'm about to say is going to sound familiar to you because I said it not that long ago about another fighter. Another fighter who is dabbling in mixed martial arts while simultaneously continuing her boxing career. Amanda Serrano. Much like Amanda Serrano. Heather Hardy is dividing her time between dabbling in the world of mixed martial arts while at the same time continuing her boxing career. And I said it before, I'm going to say it again. It's hard to imagine that you're giving 100% to both sports when you're dividing your time between them. Both of these sports are very different. You understand? They're very different sports. And it's hard to imagine that you can continually compete at the championship level in either one of them when you're dividing your time between them. That adds an element of intrigue to this rematch between Heather and Shelly. The reason for that is, well, Shelly Vincent has a professional record of 23 and 1, and she's coming off of five consecutive victories. And that way, Shelly's got her eyes on the ball. You know, she doesn't have to rearrange her focus to boxing because her focus is boxing. That's what she's been doing, and she's got five wins in a row to prove it. Whereas Heather Hardy is dividing her time between boxing and mixed martial arts. Now, Heather Hardy's still undefeated as a boxer, but you gotta wonder what effect could it have ahead of a rematch? What effect could it have that now she's gotta realign her focus to boxing, where her focus was just mixed martial arts? Okay, now you gotta get back to the boxing. Understand that this situation is different than Amanda Serrano's upcoming title fight. Amanda Serrano is not facing an opponent like Shelly Vincent, you understand? Reynoso is not the equivalent of Shelly Vincent. Shelly Vincent very much appears to be at the top of her game. Whereas the chick that Amanda's about to fight, you know, even if Amanda's not as focused on boxing as she was before, I can still see her beating her. But this fight between Shelly and Heather, you gotta consider that, well, Shelly's a stiffer opponent than, than, than the girls Amanda's fighting, and that's who Heather's gonna be fighting. And it just so happens that Heather's gotta realign her focus back to boxing. And you facing, you know, somebody who's a decent opponent. I think that adds a lot of intrigue to this rematch. Then there's the added incentive of a world title being on the line. You know, that, that may compel one of these fighters or both of these fighters to really go for the gusto. The fact that, all right, now you got a rematch. Now you can either put a stamp on the first fight or avenge the first fight if you're Shelly Vincent. You understand? I think it's very intriguing. Now, I haven't picked a pony in the show yet. I, I want to see the, the first fight one more time before I make a decision. But I will say that this is a lot more intriguing than the first fight. Because you got to wonder... Has bouncing around between sports affected Heather Hardy? Would that affect her ahead of the rematch? Or can she win the rematch in the same as or better fashion than she did before? You understand? Shelly Vincent's only got one professional loss. That's at the hands of Heather Hardy. Who knows if she can avenge the loss? Who knows if this is the opportunity for her to do that? So it's, it's a very intriguing situation. And this is going to be on the undercard for the Daniel Jacobs versus Sergei, Sergei Didivianchenko IBF title fight in October. Keep your eyes peeled for that. I think it promises to be a very interesting fight. And now it is time for another episode of q &A. Now we hear my comments from you, members, to assess their stupidity and embarrass you into exile. Boxing Prophet Perez left this comment under my last video regarding Canelo Alvarez's current physique and how he's noticeably smaller ahead of the rematch than he was in the first fight. Boxing Prophet says, I don't agree, but here's a question. What if you're wrong? And what if Canelo does win the rematch? What are you going to say? Now I'm going to try to field these questions one at a time because obviously this is a subject that is very close to Boxing Prophet, which is why he had so much to say about it. Now the first question was, what if Canelo does win the rematch? What am I going to say? Well, I'm not one for shying away from eating my crow. Anybody that follows this channel knows that, that if I made a bad pick and, and, and it came out wrong, I'll be the first to admit it. But you need to realize something. Canelo winning the rematch is not going to undo that positive test. You do understand that. That he's already tested positive, and the damage from that is already done.
public perception of that isn't necessarily going to change whether he wins or he loses. You do realize that this isn't a time machine. Beating Golovkin at this point is not going to put Canelo in a time machine to go back in the past and test negative. It's not. He already tested positive, and the damage from that is done. Nothing that he can do at this point is going to rewrite history. Oh. You're treating this entire performance-enhancing drug fiasco as if it's a matter of opinion when it's not. It's not my opinion that they found a ped present in his body. That's not my opinion. That's a fact. That is simply a matter of fact. And the only thing that boils down to opinion is whether you believe his story or not. Now, I happen to not believe his story. I don't believe him. Oh. But whether I believe him or not, it doesn't change the fact that he did test positive for a performance enhancing drug, that he was suspended as a result of that, and that ended up postponing the rematch. None of that is gonna change if he beats Golovkin in a rematch. That's already done, and you can't rewrite history. So regardless of who wins and who loses in September, the past is the past, and it's not gonna change. Uh, another comment that he left was, I could say the same to you, and why aren't you asking yourself why wasn't Triple G testing, and why is he now not enrolled to a year-round testing? Seems to me you're using pictures and closer angles to make it to where Canelo looks bigger. Anyone can do that, bruh. Now this guy, obviously, I mean, you can make the deduction that he's a very big Canelo fan, because he's acting as if I'm the only one who's noticed how small Canelo looks. I'm not the only guy that's talking about this. You you do realize that. And as far as that dumbass fucking question, why am I not asking how come Triple G isn't enrolled in the clean boxing program? It's because he is, you fucking idiot. You can go on BoxRec and see who's enrolled and who isn't. I mean, Triple G's been enrolled in the, in the clean boxing program for some time now. Like, what are you, an, like, what are you, an idiot? And, and he's already, you know, I mean, you can go to the VADA website and look up this kind of stuff yourself that, you know, he's used VADA several times before. So, I don't even know why you insist on debating a subject that you didn't bother to do the research on. This is the typical dumb shit that happens when you discuss this subject with a Canelo fan. This motherfucker's actually mad that I noticed the change in Canelo's physique, that he's smaller than he was ahead of the first fight. This motherfucker's actually mad at that. Well, you know what? Pick a number and get in fucking line. Because these Canelo fanboys are a dime a dozen. And you know what? If you're mad that I'm making light of how small he looks ahead of the rematch, you're not just mad at me. You must be mad at a lot of people. Because a lot of people notice this shit. He says I'm using fucking camera angles. Hey, jackass, I'm not the one that took the picture, you know? How the fuck could I affect the angles of a picture that was already taken when, like, are you, oh my God. And, and this is what Canelo fans do. This is what they do. They make these cockamamie fucking arguments because they don't like, you know, they want to, they want to hear that Canelo's innocent and that he, you know, they, that, they want you to just say what they want to hear. But that's not reality. And if that kind of shit bothers you, I don't know why you'd be subscribed to this channel. And the fun doesn't stop there. He goes on to say, since when? WBC fake ass testing doesn't count everyone. Fighting for a title has to be enrolled. And that's how Clen came out in the first place. It seem you know, yeah, that, that he's showing his intelligence, people. It's seem you know and do your research. But you don't know it all. That's why I don't like talking to dudes like you. Well, if you don't like talking to dudes like me, why are you subscribed to this channel and why are you commenting under my... You know, you know, let, you know well, let's, let's get this out of the way. This guy thinks I'm making this stuff up as it goes along when the WBC and VADA, they release statements, you know, several months ago that everybody in the top 15 and the champions, they have to be enrolled in the program. And if they're not, they're going to get dropped. And it just so happens that they dropped 25 guys immediately after saying that. 25 guys who weren't enrolled. At the same time, Canelo Alvarez himself very recently, even though he should have been dropped, he, one, he should have never been in their ranks to begin with, but he was in their ranks somehow, having not been enrolled in the program. But very recently, he was dropped, and he had to enroll in the program in order to get back into those ranks. So I don't, you know, I don't, once again, Canelo Alvarez fans, and this is true of many fans of fighters, that they're not fans of the sport, rather, they are fans of fighters. You don't make no fucking sense. And that's cool, I don't give a fuck if you you don't make fucking sense but you don't have to bother me with your stupidity because i actually took the time i actually took the time out to do the legwork to read the stories and get the screenshots to post this shit right here so that idiots like you don't ask me stupid fucking questions and what do you do you ask me stupid fucking questions i say this all the time 
Guys like Boxing Prophet Perez, they don't belong in boxing groups or in boxing channels because they're not boxing fans. You're a Canelo fan. And it's for that reason that you don't belong on any of these platforms. Here, least of all, you belong on a fucking fan page because you're a fucking fanboy. So stay the fuck off this channel. I still don't understand how or why these guys come here. What were you expecting, man? Moving on. The open workouts for Tyson Fury and, and Bianetta's upcoming fight this weekend, you know, they staged those. Uh, Tyson Fury looks, you know, he really looks the part. If nothing else, what we can see is that Tyson Fury has worked very hard to shed the weight. He was in very good spirits uh, ahead of this fight this weekend. And that's, you know, that's really what you want to see from Tyson Fury right now, that he really looks the part. You know, that's indicative of the work that he's putting in the gym in camp that he's worked very hard to get to this point where he is back in fighting form now all that's really left for him to do is is facilitate that with a solid performance against Bianetta. and i'm gonna say this you know i don't expect him to look 100 percent back i don't expect to see that right away but what i'm hoping is that we see a real competitor. You know, before what we saw was a showman. I want to see a serious competitor. I want to see a contender. I want to see a guy that wants to mm -hmm. win. More than he wants to put on a show, I want to see a Tyson Fury that wants to win. To let the people out there that are supporting him know that he's serious and he's back. Now, I can't talk about this weekend's fight without touching on the Wilder situation. Talk about it. That these guys, and if you ask me, they've painted themselves into a corner, that Deontay Wilder is going to be in attendance in Belfast. And along with Deontay Wilder, Shannon Briggs is saying that he's going to be there too. So this thing could become a circus, you understand? And I do think it's good for the sport of boxing. I do think it's good for the division. I'm not completely sure that these guys are serious. I still don't know that these guys are serious when they say that they're going to fight. But what I do know is that regardless of any of that, right now, it's going to be a scene. You know, it's going to be a scene uh, the, the night of the fight. Because you're going to have Tyson Fury, the lineal heavyweight champion, and Deontay Wilder, the WBC champion, under the same roof. So it's going to be good for their publicity. But the question is, is that all this is? Is this just a PR stunt to take away attention from Anthony Joshua's upcoming fight with Alexander Povetkin. To a lot of people, that's how it reads and that's how it reads to me. And I think that these guys have added too much pressure on themselves. You know, Tyson Fury was free to come back at his own pace. But since they've been so adamant that the Deontay Wilder fight is all but done, if anything happens to that fight, you understand, after all the shit they done said, if they, because they've been saying that the fight is all but done. Okay, that's what y'all said. Well, if you guys don't fight now, it's gonna backfire. And both of you are gonna look like you're full of shit. Tyson Fury's handlers in particular, they've put themselves in a situation where now they have to deliver or their credibility in the eyes of the boxing public is gonna be hampered. It's gonna be, it's gonna be tainted. Because you guys are the ones that put this shit out there, you understand? And you guys are the ones that have been talking about it. You're the guys that put it in people's heads that you have intentions of fighting Deontay Wilder after the Pianeta fight. So if you guys don't deliver, that shit is going to backfire and it's going to backfire quickly. This is a very curious situation. It's curious because on one hand, we want to see what Tyson Fury is going to bring to the table in this fight. It's, cur it's a curious situation because of that, but just as well. If he wins and he does look good, are we really going to see him fight Deontay Wilder thereafter? Y'all know how I feel. I'm not sold that these guys are being serious. I'm of the opinion that they're doing what they got to do to draw attention to themselves and away from Anthony Joshua. So in that way, they raise their profiles, they raise their stock, and they hurt his credibility with the boxing fans. They make him appear a certain way by working with each other. That they may have no intentions of fighting each other, but they're going to use each other to create that synergy. And then, you know, maybe they pretend that the fight is signed. They pretend that it is, and then one of them pulls out injured. Something like that. It could be that way. I don't know. It's a very curious situation. And I think the eyes of the boxing public are going to be focused on that fight. Not necessarily just because of Pianeta and Fury, but because of what they're promising thereafter. And, and rest assured, this is, this is of their design. They created this entire situation. So now they have put themselves in a situation where they may be forced to deliver. And that's the thing. That even if Tyson Fury looks good against Pianeta and beats him, in my opinion, that still doesn't mean he's ready, but he better be.